In this video, I want to introduce you to the idea of continuous paths and loops in topological spaces and the idea of homotopy. I'm going to assume you're happy with the words topological space and continuous map. If you haven't come across this notion, I've got a sequence of videos introducing you to it that you can watch at any time during the course. For now, you should just think of them as metric spaces if you haven't already seen the definition of a topological space. Um, it's basically the most general setting in which the notion of a continuous map is well defined. And you, you have the intuition for this for metric spaces anyway. So you should think of it as a metric space. The technical definitions are given in other videos that you can watch. Um, but if you everywhere mentally substitute your favorite metric space, a topological space then it won't make a difference so with that in mind let's make a definition let x be a topological space a path in x is a continuous map gamma from the unit interval from 0 to 1 to x. Now you might prefer to think of this as a parametric curve that depends on some point t in the interval and sort of varies in the space x and gives you a path like this. So this is gamma of t think of it as a parametric curve. And the requirement is that gamma depends continuously on this variable t. For example, you could have gamma of t equals t0, that's a path in the plane, so x is the plane r2. This is a continuous map that starts at the origin, t equals 0, and moves along the x-axis until it gets to the point 1, 0 at time 1. Or you could have the unit circle cos 2 pi t sine 2 pi t again. It's a path in the plane starting here, going round coming back again. Okay, so these are examples of paths in the plane, um, but we're going to allow the target of the path to be a topological space more generally. This second example is a closed loop. It starts and ends at the same point. So definition, a path is called a loop if uh, gamma of 0 equals gamma of 1. So the path gamma. And it's called a loop based at x. If gamma of 0 equals gamma of 1 equals x. So in this case it's based at the point 1, 0. Okay, so that's what I mean when I talk about paths and loops. In the last video we saw the word homotopy, so I now need to tell you what a homotopy is. And I'm technically going to tell you what a free homotopy is first. So this is free homotopy of loops. Roughly speaking, a free homotopy of loops is a family of loops depending on some parameter. And it traces out some kind of a surface as it moves. So roughly speaking, a homotopy is a one parameter family of loops. It 
let's say gamma 0 to begin with then gamma t and then or maybe not a t because we've used t already as a variable in gamma so let's say s is this parameter and then at s equals 1 we get to a different loop more precisely I should say what this means so now we have two parameters right we have the time parameter in the path or the loop gamma and we have this s that tells us which path we're moving along so we put those two parameters together and we define a homotopy to be a continuous map from the square 0 1 times 0 1 into x so here the parameter on this um, this factor of the square is s and on this factor of the square is t the s axis this is the t axis and the the point it may be called h the point is for each value of s if i fix the s value i get a path by letting t vary so gamma s t is h s t so this is a loop for each s and the key thing that's nice about this definition is that I can now talk about this being a continuous family of loops it's not completely clear what that means in this picture appears but somehow the, the loop should vary continuously in a continuous manner along the homotopy and that's just saying it's continuous in s and t simultaneously as, as variables it's a continuous map from the square to x now again if you've not seen the notion of a topological space you know topological space is the natural place to make sense of continuity in that context it means a pre-image of an open set in x is an open set in the square now but you may have seen metric spaces and this is a metric space in so your favorite notion of continuity is, is fine for understanding what this what this definition means now it turns out this notion of homotopy while it's very useful um, is not going to be the one that gives us a fundamental group uh, we're going to need a slightly more restrictive notion of homotopy called based homotopy and this is to do with the base point of the loop where it starts and ends So if um, x is a base point in our space x, um, then a homotopy based at x is a homotopy, just as in the previous slide, where h s 0 equals h s1 equals x for all s so what's that saying remember if i restrict to a particular value of s that gives me a path and hs0 is the start point of that path hs1 is the end point of that path so all of these paths are starting and ending at x So a, hom a based homotopy looks more like this. Right, the free homotopy on the previous page. The, the, the loops don't have to pass through a fixed point. They can just kind of wiggle around. But for a based homotopy, everything has to pass through a, a fixed point x. The advantage of this is that you have, if you have two points, sorry, two loops passing through the same point, then you can concatenate them right you can do this one followed by that one whereas if you have two loops that don't pass through the same point there's no way to concatenate them into one loop and this is what's going to give us the algebraic group structure on the fundamental group 
So again, we're going to think of this as a family of paths or family, family of loops starting at gamma 0, which is what I get at s equals 0, going through gamma s, which is here at gamma equals uh, to some fixed value of s, and then ending up at gamma 1. And if I have a homotopy like this, I write gamma 0 is homotopic to gamma 1. It's a little squiggly equals. I say gamma 0 is homotopic. To gamma 1. So now let me prove something for you. I am going to prove that if gamma is a loop in Rn based at the origin, then gamma is homotopic based homotopic to the constant loop at zero. So this means the loop that sends t to zero for all t. It's called the constant loop that just sits at the origin for time one. Okay, so here's my loop gamma. It's kind of clear I should just be able to draw lines like this and contract the curve down to the origin. And that's exactly what I do. So define the homotopy HST to just be this. Can write it in coordinates. Right, so um, S is the parameter along the homotopy. As S varies, I get a rescaling of the path gamma. And this is continuous because gamma is continuous and multiplication is a continuous map. So I get a continuous map of two variables, S and T. This is a homotopy. At time S equals zero, the loop I get at gamma 0 is 1 minus 0 times gamma t, so that's gamma. At s equals 1, I get 1 minus 1 times gamma, so I get the constant loop at 0. So it does give me a homotopy like this, and all I need to check is that it's a based homotopy. And it's a based homotopy because h of s0 is um, 1 minus s times gamma of 0. Gamma of 0 is the origin, right? Gamma is based at the origin. So that's always 0. And h of s1 similarly is something times the origin. So that gives me the origin again. So it's based at the origin. Okay, so it's actually very rare that you can write your homotopy quite this explicitly. But this is a really nice example of a what's called a null homotopy. In other words, a homotopy to a constant map. In Rn. So homotopy of loops turns out to give you an equivalence relation on loops and it will be the based homotopy classes of based loops that's going to turn into our fundamental group.